Hello Stamper, welcome to Frenchie's, <laughs> Frenchie's video. I'm France Martin, independent demonstrator with Stamping Up. And today it's the Boca technique on watercolor. I did a live event on that and I had said I would shoot a quick video. But the live event, we did many, many cards, uh, the background. So I cannot do that in a regular setting. I'm going to show it to you quick. So this was one that we done. And I'm going to demo this uh, color combo today. This one here, it's using a window sheet on top. It's the same technique. The only difference you can see, instead of stamping on my image on my watercolor paper after you've done the bokeh, you're going to stamp with a uh, stays on on the window sheet. And this is the same. This one here... It's you cut your image and uh, you glue it right on top of it. So that's a different way to bring your image different look. This was another one. So you can see at live event, well, I stand for an hour solid pretty much with chit chatting, but we get a lot of time to do a lot more. So, and this one here, it's on the window sheet too. You wonder how I glue my window sheet? I just pick and choose some spot that I think it won't show and I put glue dots. It's going to show a little bit, but not that much. This was another one. And here's another one. So you see we had done plenty of uh, background and then I got all these one too. So you know what? I really like uh, with the tempting turquoise. Um, so let me switch my color. We're going to use Tempting Turquoise uh, Old Olive. I think that one show very, very well. So instead of the, the one in the pinkish I told you was with the strawberry, we're going to use Old Olive, Daffodil Delight, and Tempting Turquoise. What you're going to do is use your... Uh, cardstock that it's not regular cardstock it is um watercolor cardstock so let's move this and i'm going to spray this with water i got a rag here yes it's my craft rag it's full of ink you can see it's time to wash it i would say now we're going to take some um this is our spritz bottle and I fill it with water and the reason why I like our spritz bottle a lot more than another bottle it's because it's a very light light mist and that's what I like about it now I'm opening my ink pad and if you see in my ink pad I get all ink there that's where that I put my reinker. you just add a few drop of reinker, and then when you done close your ink pad and you don't waste some people like to use those little tray well me I like to use this directly and the reason, like I said, I don't waste any ink pad. Believe it or not, I forgot my um, aqua painter. Here we go. So now we're using the aqua painter. And uh, this you just, oh, this is not the one that I wanted. It's a big one, this one. Let me, here we go, I got one here. So the way that you just open this up here and you fill your water. The best tip I can give you for this, it's make sure that your brush is wet. So what I do, I squeeze my water till my brush is very wet. Now I've been talking way too much, I think. I get puddle place that I just want to make sure this is wet. You can start with dark, light, whatever that you prefer. I'm going to start with my uh, yellow. And you see, I just touch and it do like a spider web. That's where the water was sitting. And even if you get some white by the time you're done, you're okay. Now I'm going to uh, wipe my brush. And the reason why, it's because I don't want to mix my reinker in each. Uh, and I just keep on adding. I don't want big uh, daub. So I just keep on brushing it. So you can do as big, as little as you want. It's no right and wrong. That's what really I'm trying to say. Now I'm going to wipe that. Go in my green. And remember, green and yellow, um, I mean, um, blue and yellow really turn um, green. So you want less of the green because 
when you're done, if the yellow and the green gonna uh, the yellow and the blue gonna mix, you're gonna have even more green. So I just keep on adding, and like I said, even if you get some of the white showing, that's perfectly fine because we're gonna add some of the white. So that would look pretty good. Now what I would do, I would let this uh, air dry or if you're in a rush, then what you can do is, oops, too much there. You can uh, use the E tool and dry it with the E tool. So now if some look too much, I just, here we go. So that looked very good to me. I would let that dry and I know exactly I think I'm going to use my um, kind of eclectic to finish this one. So I will finish this card and it will be on my blog the day that I'm going to put this video. Et voila. See? It's all marbleized. Okay. So now what you would do, like I said, you would let that dry. Well, to speed up the process, I still have some leftover from the live event so now I can remove make sure remove my rag but make sure when you store your brush that you clean um, your brush very good so then when you come to use it it's not uh, full of color and then it would be blocked okay now let me want a piece of uh, okay here Already got some on that. Okay, we're going to use this one here. This was in the Rose Red um, Wisteria Winter in Pink Pearlet. It looked very blah when you see it. And what I done, I just use a piece of cardstock, and you can say I use it over and over, and I punch out one and a quarter, one and three quarter. It don't matter the size of the circle as long as you get circle. Some people like to do it on window sheet. Then if you do it on window sheet, the punch, it's too hard on the punch to punch it out. You're going to use your uh, circle um, tinlets. I like it on cardstock uh, better. The only reason it's because that it chew less my um, dauber. The vellum and uh, not the vellum oh maybe we can do it on vellum i don't know if it's strong enough but the window sheet it's more sharp it still work great a lot of people like that because when you're done you can wipe it so now we're going to use white uh whisper white craft ink and we're going to start doing our circle and when you're going to do your circle it look very very dark your white as it dry, it's going to change lots. I mean, it's going to light up a lot. So it won't be as dark your white. If you want it more white, more dark, come back after it, your first layer it's dry, and then you can add more. That's no problem at all. You can always come back and add more. You can overlap. I'm sure I'm overlap at place, and that is perfectly fine. Because boca mean um, blur for photograph uh, term. It mean blurry. Um, I think I'm gonna add one right there. See how much it light up the. So now I'm just gonna use the dauber and add here and there a little bit more. So now when my white is dry, then I'm going to be able to stamp on it. See all the circle? But like I said, when it dry, it's completely different. Because look at this here when it's dry. It was as dark as the other one. And see, you see a lot more of the color and less of the white. But <clears throat> if this is not white enough for you, like I said, you can come back. This was the big one. You can come back and add more of the white. That's no problem at all. You just add till you get the look. I don't add any. I, for me, one layer seem okay to me. It all depends the look that you're going for. So when it comes to crafting, really, it's no right and wrong way. You just do what and you stop when you think, okay, this is good enough. None of the cards going to be the same. It's all going to be completely different. Here. 
here we go so now when this dry it's going to get a little bit lighter but you see more your circle and for some reason those dark in the camera it's not as dark as that in real life it don't show like that in front of me so now the next step after that it's all dry you would take uh, let me take one here so I got this one here that's the one I thought to do today with the um, strawberry uh, slush daffodil delight and oh this one it's strawberry slush daffodil delight and uh, calypso uh, yes it is calypso it looked very dark I must have put a lot so I'm going to use the uh, kind of a eclectic and I'm going to use my Daffodil Delight for the sun. Something very different here we're going to do. Give a good push there. This is kind of cool because you just see the ray. It looks like the light is coming right through. Then I'm going to use um, the old olive. And I'm going to do, you don't really see the ray on the, it look very cool. And you know what? Let's take, um, hello honey, because it's darker. And I think the ray is going to show even more. Because it just show a little bit there. I think it is so cool. I don't know how much I'm going to match them. But even if it's off, I think it's going to be okay. Oh, perfect. Now you can see it even better. See, it really looked like the sun and the light that's coming through. I absolutely love this one for this. Now, I'm going to use my um, stays on. And I'm going to use my greeting. And I'm going to put that right here. Let's hope I'm not too crooked. I think I'm way off. That's okay. Et voila, my friend. So that is how you're going to do your book up on watercolor. It's quite a bit different than the regular. Here's one on the regular paper. It's a different look. So many ask me, can we do it on regular paper? Absolutely. But you won't have that deep um, coloration, like except if you're really, really sponge. And it's not the same effect. It's not the same paper. So this is it, my friend, on how to... Um, do uh, the bokeh with watercolor paper. I'm going to have a more picture on my um, site and I already have some there from my live event. Till next time, happy stamping my friend. And for all your product though, before I go, you can visit my blog at frenchystamps.com and you get the easy button shop. Thank you so much and have a great day.